MAGA Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert may be in just as much trouble in her new district as she was in her old district. What? This is such a delightful story. Let me fill you in on all the details. I'll discuss the debate she appeared at. Crazy. The bad news she was hit with and some other things. So stick around for all of it. First, the context. Of course, we've covered extensively the fact that Lauren Boebert was originally running for re-election in the district she currently represents, Colorado's third district, and was heading into a rematch with Democrat Adam Frisch, who lost to her by less than 600 votes last go round, and it looked like he had a solid shot at defeating her this time. So a terrified Boebert. In response to that, decided she would run away from her district and run for Congress in Colorado's 4th District instead. It's a more conservative district, so of course her hope was that instead of potentially losing against Adam Frisch in the general election, she would get the nomination in Colorado's 4th and then be able to soar through the general election there. But it's looking like it is far, super far from a sure thing in terms of getting the nomination because of the situation in the Republican primary in Colorado's fourth. And some people, as we'll get to, are already writing Boebert's political obituary. My goodness. Okay. So what do I mean? Well, there was a Republican congressional primary debate for Colorado's fourth district on Thursday night. And not only did it yield a very strange moment, but it also yielded a straw poll result that spells trouble for Bober. And before getting to that poll, we got to talk about this really embarrassing moment from the debate. The candidates get asked, have you ever been arrested? And six out of the nine people on stage raised their hand. And Lauren Boebert just seems so pumped about the question. And then the crowd cheers the fact that a majority of their options have been arrested. And for things that you shouldn't be cheering, here's the moment. Another show of hands here. Um, have you ever been arrested? Do we get this? <laughs> do, do we get to say what for? <laughs> do, do we get to say what for? Maybe it doesn't matter. Praise the Lord. Very strange. And then I'll defer to Colorado News anchor Kyle Clark to fill you in on more about that moment. We are getting some feedback tonight on Republican congressional candidates getting cheered at last night's debate when most of them said they've been arrested. Have you ever been arrested? <laughs> Do we get this? <laughs> whole lot of feedback from both viewers and political talkers in town trying to explain away that moment. And a lot of the explanations don't make sense when you stop to think. People are claiming that, you know, the arrests are fun or funny because they were all for minor charges. Or that, that being arrested makes a politician relatable, like everyone else. Stop and think about that. The cheers and laughter about six of the nine Republican congressional candidates being, on, uh, being arrested, that all came before anybody said a word about why they were each arrested. The most recent, the most prominent arrest of somebody up on that stage was State Rep Mike Lynch for drunk driving and a weapons charge. I mean, not super funny stuff for anybody who cares about responsible gun ownership or their loved ones avoiding death by drunk driver. I watched Congresswoman Lauren Boebert and Trent Lisey next to her smile and, and high five over their arrests. He's all about backing the blue. Did he know that one of Boebert's arrests was for an altercation with law enforcement? She says that she moved districts across the state to protect her family. Did she know that Lisey was convicted of harassment after he got physical during a domestic dispute? I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that they and the crowd didn't know those details. That they were just cheering the fact that they're all part of a political party where defying the law these days is a badge of honor. Yeah, so I want you to hold on to in your head the name Mike Lynch. He was the Colorado House Minority Leader, just resigned from that position, but is still a state rep and is now running for Congress. And it recently got revealed 
which is why he resigned from his position as minority leader, that he had a DUI that he didn't notify people about. And that was mentioned by Kyle Clark. And I want to circle back to that in this segment a little bit later. There's this moment from an interview where he gets confronted about it. I'll play for you. Wild will also look at dash cam footage from the arrest. So Mike Lynch, hold on to that. But first, that whole moment on stage, just so strange. Woohoo, I was a part of domestic violence. Woohoo, I got a DUI. Lauren Boebert, woohoo, I'm always doing crazy stuff. Who even knows? Elect us to Congress. It just seems like the opposite behavior you'd expect from people trying to be elected to the United States Congress. But then we get to the straw poll result. So at this debate, they polled the audience of fourth district Republicans on who they would support. And here is what we learned as is being reported on by Newsweek. Lauren Boebert's Colorado gamble backfires. Colorado Representative Lauren Boebert's plan to stay in Congress by switching districts could backfire after she came in fifth place, fifth place in a straw poll. Ross Story also is reporting on this Colorado Republican Lauren Boebert's decision to leapfrog from her district into a neighboring one that is a more conservative friendly district is not going very well, reports Colorado politics. As Ernest Looning is reporting, Boebert finished in the middle of the pack and the results announcement drew gasps from the crowd that had just witnessed gasps, I love that, uh, just witnessed the Colorado lawmaker face off against eight other Republicans. According to the report, in the decidedly non-scientific survey, important to point out, Boebert landed in fifth place with just over 10% of the vote behind three veteran state lawmakers and a former talk radio host who ran last cycle for the U.S. Senate. Surprised some in the room, but drew shrugs from others who point out that the hall was filled with local Republicans loyal to other candidates who shared the debate stage. So there we go. And listen, the fact that one straw poll didn't go well for her doesn't mean she can't become the nominee. She could very well turn things around. But to be the undeniably biggest name in the room and to get fifth place among the debate attendees is not a good sign for Lauren Boebert, a good sign for democracy and our country. And maybe, just maybe, the fourth district is interested in her bringing the chaos she's known for into their district. Now, there was another interesting moment from the debate where Boebert is confronted about her hopping districts just to help her political prospects, confronted by actually Mike Lynch. Uh, the Associated Press reports Republican primary candidate Mike Lynch didn't sugarcoat the question to his opponent on the cram debate stage. Republican Representative Lauren Boebert, who hopped into the race last month, partly over fear of a loss in the district she currently represents. Quote, could you give the definition of carpetbagger? Lynch asked to low murmurs from the crowd at the first Republican primary debate in Fort Lupton, a community in Colorado's fourth district. Then take a look at this just Profound response from Lauren Boebert. Quote, the crops may be different in Colorado's 4th District, but the values are not. And I'm a proven fighter for the values that you all believe in, said Boebert, her voice forceful over the wide room in a recreation center. Loving the writing there. So that's that. Then you had Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett responding to all this news on X saying, before I go to bed, I thought it would only be fitting to send thoughts and prayers to my colleague, Lauren Boebert. It's my understanding that she placed fifth in her first straw poll of the election cycle. Now, how many of y'all think Bobo gonna try to convince us that polls don't matter, of course, uh, unless they're trash for Biden and great for Trump? You also had the Republicans against Trump account on X saying, just lots of Boebert mocking. It's Hilarious. Lauren Boebert finishes fifth in a straw poll at the first GOP primary debate in her new district. She received just 10% of the vote from the Republicans who participated in the survey at the debate. She's finished. And they kindly attach <laughs> a very nice photo of Lauren Boebert to this post on X. So very interesting situation playing out in Boebert's world, to say the least. Hopefully it'll end in her losing. Now I want to touch on quickly the subject of one of her competitors, Mike Lynch who asked that question that I just uh, outlined, because as I mentioned, it was revealed that he was arrested for DUI and tried to keep it quiet. Now that he's running for Congress, it was uncovered. And you'll see some of the dash cam footage up next to me for our video viewers. And at one point that I'll play for you, he tells the officer that he has a gun on him and reaches for it. Don't yep, touch it for me. Don't I have a gun it. in this pocket too. You have a gun? Yes. Stop, don't move, stop. Don't You're not gonna do that, okay? No, sir. We're not and he was confronted about this during an interview with Channel 9 News reporter Marshall Zellinger and specifically confronted about one strange element of his arrest. Take a look. 
I'm here to talk to you today about a DUI from a year and a half ago, but not because you told us about it. Why didn't you tell us about it? Well, it's a personal matter, and I didn't think there was a reason to. You're the highest ranking member of the House Republicans, so you're a leader. Mm -hmm. Why would it not be of public interest? Um, it's, it, it's a private matter, I, so, I, you know, I was dealing with it uh, privately. Do you remember being stopped and the details of what's in the, the report? Absolutely. One of the first things you did was ask for the trooper to call Mike Hahn. Mike Hahn is the lobbyist for the Colorado State Patrol. Why did you ask for the trooper to call Mike Hahn? Um, he's my point of contact with the State Patrol, and I would like for him to be informed <laughs> that one of the one of you know his reps was uh, had an interdiction that's it's pretty standard protocol um, w I mean a lot of folks do that when they're pulled over people are instructed members of the legislature are instructed to no. contact Mike Hahn when pulled over or have the trooper or whoever's pulling them over contact Mike Hahn no it um, it was a courtesy call so they didn't hear it from somebody else because I have a, a very strong relationship with with that department. Can, that, can you see how that could be seen by, by a voter or by just a, a general public? Isn't that what people might hate about politics? Like you get pulled over and you're asking them to call someone who's a point of contact between representatives and state patrol as though it might be favoritism. Yeah, I can see where that could be misinterpreted, but it, it, was, it was not that at all. I asked for no favor. It, that's written up in the, in the report, um, so yeah. Do you remember being asked what the blood alcohol content limit in Colorado is? Um, I believe, yeah, I mean. Do you know what you told, it's in the report, do you know what you told them? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, you told them 0.2, yeah. and it's 0.08. Right. I think that's, my math is not great, but I think you overshot by 250%. Right. You're a state lawmaker, I, maybe it's evidence of being drunk, but do you know the law? Well, I mean, the evidence is in, is in that paperwork. They blood tested me, so yeah, that, that yeah. But do, are you aware of the blood alcohol content limit in Colorado being 0.08? Absolutely, yeah. And I watched all of the dash cam footage and he was super drunk, which is obviously so dangerous and he could have gotten someone seriously hurt or killed. And I don't think his answers in that interview are helping much. So those are a couple of the options in Colorado's fourth district now. Bobert and Lynch, pretty great stuff, huh? Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. You can become a member at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. And podcast listeners, make sure to rate and review the show. I'll talk to you next time.